Well, hey there team, welcome back to the channel and welcome to Loop Hero. Oh, any excuse to play this will do me fine. This is one of the, my favorite games in probably the last decade and it's on deep, deep sale at the moment. So let's put it into rotation and see how we go. All right, straight into it, cold start. The stars in the sky are going out one by one, but no one notices it. No one can stop it. I'm racing to the last place where there is still hope. I need to make it before, before it's too late. Oh, look at this. It's glooping in. The sounds of agony will quickly fade. The world will be destroyed. Even the memory of it will be gone. And even there is absolutely, even if there is absolutely no chance of bringing it all back, there will always be someone who is willing to do the impossible. In a place without space, without time, without memories. That's me, baby! Where am I? I can't, can't see anything except this path. My head is killing me. I remember only a skeleton with a staff up in the sky. This darkness was coming from him. Did he destroy everything around here? Just standing here won't do me any good, I guess. So I'm gonna run around <laughs> in the circle. Um, okay, cool. Let's follow the bouncing ball, play dumb as it were. Uh, instead of me front-loading an explanation. This game is very innovative and very different. Um, change between adventure, traveling through space and planning, stop modes. Uh, you can press space bar, right? <laughs> Off I go. Pay attention to the day progress bar at the top of the screen, which is this one right up here. New enemies usually appear at the end of the day. Continue your journey by changing the game mode. A living ball of slime. Quite a nuisance. They digest anything that they can. Hey, I remembered this creature. Maybe I just need to freshen up my memory and everything will go back to normal. Traveling fighting and most other actions are done automatically. The player can't affect them directly. All right, so it's like an auto battler. Nice. It's hard to fight with your bare hands. I think there's an undigested weapon in the remains of that thing. So we can equip that. Or I can lock it. Ah, can I like shift click it or something? Control click? That's right, that'll do. I think I remember there was a grove nearby. Are these even my memories or do they belong to that slime? You can use cards that are left after defeating enemies to add various new objects to the map. That's what planning mode is for. Drag the card to a suitable place to remember, right? So we put the card there and we modify essentially the biome of the path, right? And then we unpause. And off we go. Get smashed. A forest rat. I was right. Some emotional stress, a few vivid images, and a bit of adrenaline, and I'll forget it all like a bad dream. I mean, I'll remember it like a bad dream. Damn it. <laughs> Good thing nobody heard that. As you probably noticed, you can get new items during card battles. Uh, some uh, items have unique features, as most of the cards hovering over them will tell you. Equip a new weapon and place a new thing. Well, we got a blue weapon, right? So it's kind of just objectively better. Damage to all two, right? You see that it deletes my previous equipment as well. And then forest, you can see for every forest, I get plus 1% hero attack speed. And for every rock, I get plus three HP, plus three more HP for every adjacent rock or mountain. So forest, let's put forest. Must be a tutorial thing. I think that the forest is a relatively late game tile. Um, anyway, I digress. Good. So there's a mountain over there, a forest over here. The world's almost back. The branches and stones in my backpack are a sure sign of that. Some of your actions will yield resources that you will need later on, but not right now. But that shouldn't stop you from looking at them right now. All right. So in our backpack, you can see we collect these. And this is for the metagame layer, right? So when you finish one of these runs, as it were, um, either you you walk away from the table and take your loot, or you push your luck and potentially die, and then you lose. It's something like 90% of it, right? So the risk-reward is a component of when you decide to cash out, right? Um, and then you go back to a, like a, a meta camp that you can build buildings and that sort of thing, campfires or, or production items. Um, and that's what you use these resources for. Cool. 
I think it's time I get some rest. The game itself is a journey on a looped path. Only you will decide when it's time for the hero to return to the camp. Either you or the fangs and claws of your enemies, of course. You can retreat almost any time, but a special animation will let you know when it's safer to do so. Retreat to the camp by pressing the button. Um, there we go. Keep all your resources if you retreat. All two of them. Let's go. It's cold and dark here. A small fire can solve both of these problems. Nice place to set up camp. Uh, this is where... Oh, how good's this music? This is where all resources you've gathered will come in handy. Who would have thought? You have just enough wood and stones to make a campfire. What a nice coincidence. Build a campfire, blah, blah, blah. Cool, we can do that. And you can see here, here's your tree of buildables. And it's significant. Build a campfire, bang. Congratulations, you've beaten this annoying tutorial. You can now start your first expedition or not, do as you wish. Cool, I like that. It's punchy, it gives you the fundamentals, the foundations. It's not a waste of time. It's a, it's a good use of time. Um, the hero restores 20% of his max HP upon entering the campfire title, which is sort of like the start finish line of your of your laps, right? Um, so by building that, we can sort of sustain a bit. And we can't build anything else, but you can see we've unlocked, we haven't got them unlocked, but we've unlocked these. You can see the resources required. So let the grind begin. Expedition menu. This path, everything is wrong, but I remember. It looks like a completely different place, and it's empty again. Do my actions have any meaning? Like I have a choice. If I need to give up and cry to save the world, I'm the worst saviour of all. Let's do it. Yeah, that's the right attitude. Let's go. So off we go, running into slimes. I think... My options might have... Oh yeah, CRT shader? Yeah, I'll keep that. Um, but you can change your cursor. That's cute. Oh, you can change your hero color as well. Oh, cool. Battle pause. Speed run mode. Allow changing fight speed. Kind of feels like it's... Oh, here you go. Game speed. Ah, look at this. So you can change your expedition speed and your combat speed. So you could turn it down if you wanted to. I'm happy for it to go, you know, full stick. So Meadow heals 2 HP at the start of each day. Um, not really any good reason not to have a Meadow, so we'll just chuck one up there. Now, there we go, yeah, yeah, that's fine. We'll put on the armor, put on the shield. I love this game so much. Put on that. Mountain, plus five HP for each adjacent rock or mountain. Now, interestingly, if I recall, if you put something next to the meadow, it changes. And this sort of combination, uh, there's all these hidden combos that you can find by playing, right? Blooming meadow, flowers get a feel for the world and bloom with pe pleasant smells. Heals 3 HP at the start of each day, so it heals even more. So the, the rocks increase your max, and the meadows increase your, your heal rate. Road Lantern. Reduce the maximum number of spawning enemies on the tile around it. Road Lantern effects can stack. So, this, um... Okay, so these slimes, you can see here, 5% chance of spawning a slime once a day. So every day cycle that ticks, every one of these road tiles has a roll and on a 5% it drops these slimes, right? So it is possible for them to spawn on the same square. Um, and what the ceiling is by default, I believe, is four. You can't have more than four enemies on a square at once, right? But if you put a road lantern, it'll bring that down. And a road lantern is something that doesn't go on the path, it goes adjacent. So if we do that there, each of these squares is now going to have a ceiling of three monsters, right? Now, if I put this next to that meadow, it doesn't affect it. Blooming meadow. So I don't know if it's strictly mountains that triggers that effect. Okay, here we go. Battlefield. Battlefield's pretty cool. It smells of blood and steel. 
Spawn a chest on an adjacent tile each loop. Enemies on the tiles and uh, around it can become ghosts when they die. Right? So... If I were to put it... That's not a bad spot. Because we'll trip the loop, it'll spawn the chest, and the chest will have level appropriate to the loop. Right? You can see up here, enemy level 1. Loop counter affects enemies levels, affects the level of equipment found. So like, you didn't, you wouldn't really want a chest here right before you tick over the loop level. You'd probably want it as early as possible. So we'll put it there. Right. Same story with the rocks. So, mountain gives plus 5 HP for each adjacent rock or mountain. And this gives plus 3 and plus 3 more, or plus 3 HP and 3 more. Okay, cool. So, they're close cousins. Oh, here we go. Another battlefield. Let's go. Let's stack them up. Now that... I should have stopped. I forgot about that. That created a blood path. Spawns a blood clot every four days, which is actually quite a powerful monster. And that's because I've managed to overlap to road and road. So there's all these little combos that you figure out as you go. Still can spawn the chest. And you can see here, you know, we're doing all right in the gear department. The chests can be mimics. Look at that. What else we got? Mountain. Yeah, okay, let's... Mountain, rock. Plus five for each adjacent rock or mountain. So a mountain on its own doesn't really do anything. The rock does, though. So maybe we start making a mountain range over here. Just to increase... Just to step out our max HP, right? And then... Plus three more HP for every adjacent rock or mountain, plus three. We could synergize it with the meadow. You know what I mean? So we'll do something like that. Cemetery, spawn a skeleton every three days. Interesting, you gotta look at the wordplay. See how this is, it spawns a chest on an adjacent tile. So it spawns the chest in one of these tiles. The cemetery goes on the path and it only spawns monsters in the cemetery. And there are some other things, like marshes or something, where they can spawn adjacent on the path. So it's there's a lot of wordplay. Um, what I wonder... So I can't put it over the blood path thing. Interesting. I might even put it here at the end. But that's the point, right? There becomes a build component. Alright. Rock. Road Lantern. Which, remember, Road Lanterns stack. So what you could potentially do is, is try and really stack them here. So is that the, the monsters are relatively low threat, but we're still going to farm out the treasure chest on a lap, right? Vampire Mansion. Adds vampires to battles on the tiles around it. So, you could do something like this. Vampire is quite strong, but maybe if it's just a slime and a vampire, it's not so bad. Meadow there. Could do something like that. Probably. Beacon. A worthless landmark in a world with no direction. Plus 40% move speed when you pass through its range. Which is normal. 20% plus 20% attack speed for all units. 
all units. Has quite a large range, doesn't it? Um, let's put it there. Mountain. Road lantern. So that, this one square here now is limited to one monster only. Plus three more HP for every adjacent rock or mountain. So we could probably commit that to the cores up here. You can collect the whole bottom row of cards, but there is a ceiling. Oblivion erases any established tiles, erases monsters from the road, right? So that's pretty handy. But what we could even do is we could use it to undo the blood clots, for example, right? Um, just to show it off. Might not necessarily be a bad thing. Because the whole reason we put all that stuff there was to farm chests. See, the skeleton takes a bit more of a biff, but we got some better loot. Now, as these fall out the bottom, they'll get trashed into resources. So there's the blood clot causing trouble. Look at him taking a beating. But generally speaking, you get a bit of a reward. Vampire Mansion. Hmm. Let's do something like that. So you can sort of see, and, and, you know, not to get ahead of myself, but you make builds out of all of this stuff. You build your own deck before a run as you unlock more cards that can go in. You can come up with some pretty crazy stuff. Back off, human. A vampire? Where are your lands? If your farmers need help, I would be glad to offer it. No more lands, no more flock. Only hundreds of years of emptiness. And hundreds of years of hunger! <laughs> Save yourself while you still can. I don't know how long I can keep my head straight. What hundred years are you talking about? Your mind is easy to trick, but you can't trick my hunger. It demands its fill every sip. Every drop of blood will go to satiate it. I'm too weak, but you can help me, and I will set this crumbled world right. That's right, I'm doing this not just for myself, but for everyone. Oh, yeah, all right, mate, the greater good. Oh, in the name of the greater good. So be grateful for my hard work, and just let me bleed you dry. Negative. Vampires often owned our lands. They kept the peace and helped our settlements prosper, but this won't do at all. Now they're just pale shadows of the former selves, both physically and mentally. Apparently, blood of other creatures can't sustain them. He wasn't joking about the hunger. Even the creatures around him were imbued with the power to drain someone else's life. So he he has a buff component, so that slime would have had life steal, right? Vampire Mansion. Oh, there, that's the grove. That's the thing I was talking about. With rat wolves. Spawn a rat wolf every two days, and they can move to adjacent tiles. Hmm. Do something like that there. So yeah, it's forever a balance of how hard do you want to push it. <laughs> Try 
treasury. Oh, I didn't know we had this. Okay, cool. The thick walls guard all kinds of riches from thieves and previous owners. Um, gives a random basic resource after placing anything on empty tiles around it. Must be surrounded by empty space when you build it, right? So this... Um, well, we'll put it here, right? And essentially you need to fill in all the tiles around it. And when you do that, it caches out. So it's got like an investment component to it. Now this goblin camp spawn... Um, the sound of backstabbing can be heard from miles away. Spawn a goblin once a day. Appears for every 10 mountain or rock tiles, right? So essentially, it's the consequence of uh, building the way that we've been building. Um, I might even put the grove there. Spider cocoon. Spawns a spider on an adjacent tile once per day. Mountain. So it's starting to get spicy, right? Where did these goblins come from? I don't remember. We remembered ourselves. <laughs> now give us all your things. You have no idea what's going on, right? Why don't you help me restore order in this world first? You can have everything that you want when I'm done. Goblins must rob. No other order in the world. Fair enough. I like his uh, style. Fair enough. Guess I don't have any objection to that. Oh wait, I do have one. How about combat? So they're quite strong actually. It's strange how these creatures appeared here on their own. Maybe it means everything is actually not so bad and the world is trying to restore itself. That, or even the apocalypse, isn't enough to get rid of some pests. Well, either or. Oh yeah? I'm just gonna front load the heck out of the thing. So you can see they're starting to pull in that in that corner because I don't really have the, the road torches or whatever for them. Um. Might hold on to the oblivion. Serve as a bit of a get out of jail free. It's a mimic, it's fighting. Oh. Beacon. Probably should have put it there in the first place. I'm just gonna continue stacking it there, you know. I'm not trying to big brain it too hard. Oof. They're starting to they're starting to put some damage on me though. Oh my goodness. Not gonna be able to handle much more of that. in this square just to give us a bit of space oh yeah beacon
But it's kind of cool seeing it all come along, you know? But I think that gauntlet, especially with his health, we're going to get 20% healing. It's probably not great. So what you can do is return to camp. You can retreat. You keep 60% of your resources, right? Stay. What you can do is hold this button. And that will sort of smart stop you at the campfire. So if you retreat mid-loop, you still lose almost half your resources. But if you make it back to the campfire and you punch out there, you keep everything. So that's the trick, is trying to trying to gauge just one more loop, that sort of thing. So we're going to retreat. We've got a lot of goods. Got a little building spaces as well. I can't believe it. Hey, everybody. The boy managed to return. <gasps> Survivors? Does this mean I'm not alone anymore? Where did you all come from? Is there still a place without darkness? Well, we don't know where we came from. That or we can't remember. These few people are all that's left of our group, I think. You're not sure? We're not sure. We reached that conclusion based on the abandoned luggage and leftover daily rations. Each day we see the signs of other people's presence around us, but as far as we know they don't exist and never did. It's like we forgot them. That is kind of tragic. Forgot them? Exactly. It's as if people are disappearing every day and we instantly forget that they existed. Just like we forgot where we came from. And our families. Maybe even ourselves. My name is Yota. That's... I still remember. Everyone else's memories are not much better. That's why I remember so little about myself. Everything is forgotten. But wait, you said I managed to return? That means you remember I was here. Yes, that's the way it's important to us. We saw you leave, but you were gone before we could approach you. Listen, we can't keep wandering in this emptiness anymore. There's a campfire here and enough space for a few sleeping bags. A real luxury in these dark times. What do you say? Oh, of course you can stay. I'd be very grateful if we could team up. I want to put everything right. I'm only beginning to remember the world as it was before. But there's no point to it without other people. It's too lonely without them. Remember the world? I don't get what you're talking about. I'm too exhausted. <laughs> so they can't even remember that but we'll be glad if you could help us. And we'll be glad to help you. Just don't ask us to follow you out there. I don't know how you manage to return, but for us, leaving the group is too dangerous. I will ask no such thing of you. For now, I just want to have a place to return to. A place where I can hear other people's voices. Cool. We weren't joking about helping you. Here are the few things that survive the cataclysm that don't vanish. Don't become forgotten. Take it. You might need it. And they gave me some resources. Statistics. Oh, that's cool. That's handy. Build. So we can... Oh, there you go. We can afford a field kitchen. Gotta put that somewhere. Oh, look at this dude. Do you know the difference between a good cook and a bad cook? The food made by a good cook is tastier. What, were you waiting for something more elaborate? Sometimes the truth is very simple. Alright, mate. Look, I have a cauldron, a hearth, a couple of knives, a bucket of potatoes, three onions, and some ham. Nothing special. Everything is very simple. But give me a few minutes and everyone in this camp will be running to my table following the tasty smell of a good stew. Oh, very good. So you can see, if you click on it, very important place for any camp. If your nose isn't lying, there is good food here. Plus 10% to the campfire's healing power, which is already at like 30... 30% restore. Oh, it, I think it was 20% restore. Oh, right. So it's added it already. Unlocks the Blood Grove card. And you can actually upgrade this building. You could remove it. But for a price, you can upgrade it. And it increases your healing power at the campfire. Alright. And if you were to go on an expedition. Chapter 1. Enemies have zero to one abilities, starting strength, class that we've got unlocked, there's his tool slots, and then you can customize your deck here, right? So it has to have minimum seven and max 12 cards, and these are two cards that we have available. The Blood Grove we just unlocked, but Chrono Crystal as well. So, and then you can make multiple deck slots. It's such a great game. Anyway, going into the next episode, and, you know, let me know if you want to see some more. Obviously, if it's well received, we'll, we'll do 100 episodes. I'd love to. Um, we'll come up with some deck builds and work it out and, and work our way through the game and its acts. Anyway, team, check it out yourself even. Like I said, it's, it is on deep sale at the moment, so well worth a look into. 
Might just leave it there for the time being, and I will catch you guys on the next one. Yeah.